Hello everyone, so we're here again in Parque Calderon, downtown historical center of Cuenca, where we've been a couple of times actually. And uh, today, this is going to be our last video from here in Cuenca. We are moving on. We're moving on to another city and uh, we're staying this time in Ecuador because I have quite enjoyed Ecuador a lot. I mean, I've really, really enjoyed it. It's a very cool place, lots of cool stuff to see, very good food, very, very nice people. Um, I've enjoyed my stay quite a bit. So much so that we're going to continue staying in Ecuador. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. There's something going on down here. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Like a concert of some sort. People playing music. You know what, before we continue the video, let's just take a quick look at what's going on over here. another thing I like about or I've liked about Cuenca so far I don't know if it's like this in the rest of Ecuador but you randomly come out sometimes on the street and you get like you never know what's gonna be happening sometimes there's a, like a big concert going on with a lot of people hanging out on a Saturday very cool this is uh, sort of like near to a holiday there was a holiday uh, International Workers Day on Wednesday Last night I heard some fireworks going off, so it's possible that there is like a longer celebration for International Workers Day here in Ecuador. Perhaps that's what they're celebrating. I'm not sure. If anybody knows down in the comments what exactly they're celebrating here on the Saturday after International Workers Day. It's like uh, Saturday, what is it, May 4th today we're filming? But anyway, this is not actually why I wanted to come down here to this neighborhood. I wanted to do our last video and the videos we usually do when we do stuff like this is we walk around the neighborhood where we've been staying. And normally, when we go to cities like this, we don't stay in the center, center, historical center. But this time we did. Uh, we did it before uh, when we were in um, Mendoza, right? When we were in Mendoza, we were staying in the historical center. But it was like a rebuilt city, you know, because of the earthquake. There was a massive earthquake, destroyed the whole city, and they rebuilt the whole center. Now this historical center is different. This is a uh, preserved UNESCO heritage site. There's a marching band right here. Anyway, for the purposes of this video, we're going to try and get ahead of the marching band. But they seem to be marching in the same direction that I was planning to walk. So we may have to change our plan on the fly. But, like I mentioned in the first video we made here when we were in Cuenca, the historical downtown center here is a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's preserved. So you get all this really awesome old architecture. Uh, you get cobblestone streets. A lot of the streets have really narrow sidewalks. It's very cool. Very cool place to walk around. And yeah, this is where we were staying. We are actually staying in um, a hotel this time. Normally, we stay in Airbnb, like an apartment. This time we're staying in a hotel, but it's a hotel that I actually booked on Airbnb. I booked it for about a month and booked it through Airbnb. It was quite affordable. And it's a nice hotel. We'll definitely see it at the end of this video because I want to shout them out because I, I quite enjoyed the stay. The people who worked there very, very friendly. The staff was very helpful, very accommodating. But what I liked about staying in the historical center here is almost all the stuff we saw for all of our videos, the, um, the stuff that I thought was really interesting about Cuenca, was all right here very very close walking distance there were a couple times when I got on a bus and there was a time 
when I got on the tram that runs through central Cuenca from east to west. Goes from the airport on the east side all the way out to like the river Tarqui down on the southwest side. And I rode that. And so it's very easy to access buses or the tram, public transportation, things like that, if you need to. But if you're staying in this part of the city in the historical center, you don't really need to, honestly. You just can walk pretty much everywhere. And if it so happens that you get caught in the rain or you just don't feel like walking anymore, you can easily take taxis in this part of the city they're very very cheap I never had a taxi ride that was more than like a dollar fifty honestly um, maybe like two dollars probably I'm gonna hop over the other side of the street real quick anyway so what I want to do today is do just a little walking tour and because you've already seen this neighborhood in a bunch of the other videos and I've already talked about some of the, like, basically in the first video we made here, the reasons why this neighborhood is really cool. It's a cool place to stay. I'm not gonna talk so much about that stuff like we normally do in videos like this, our sort of walking tour of the neighborhood videos that we've done at the end of each stay in each city so far on our trip. Just wanna take a nice long walk through the different places that we've been, sort of revisit maybe some of the areas of the neighborhood where we've been, and uh, maybe just throw in a few comments here and there about why I really enjoyed staying in this part of Cuenca. So a few blocks down here on the street that we've been on, Simon Bolivar, we're about I don't know, six blocks west of the center, the historical center, about six blocks behind us. And you can see this church up in front of us. We're actually coming up on uh, Plaza San Sebastian. Plaza San Sebastian, where we were in our video about uh, the independence, the Cuenca Republic, and the independence of Ecuador from the Spanish. And it's a nice little plaza. I really do enjoy this. The one thing I'm hoping for this walk video is that we don't get caught out in the rain. Um, I've mentioned before, Cuenca, it's kind of rainy, kind of cloudy. Um, it's not like this the whole year. We sort of arrived here right at the end of the, uh, of the rainy season. The rainy season here runs between like, from like February through May. And we arrived here sort of at the end of it. So we're catching the tail end. You can see the beautiful plaza there again. And uh, and it looks like the it's pretty clear, but the weather report says it may start to rain pretty soon. So hopefully, hopefully we don't get rained on out here. Anyway, we're here at the plaza. And of course, the restaurant we went to in our video about restaurants of Cuenca, the delicious Osaka ramen, where we got ramen. It's right along here. It's right up here in front of us. Here it is right here. It's not open because it's morning, but Osaka ramen. <laughs> Right over here, actually, on this square on uh, Plaza San Sebastian, that uh, we actually just walked around real briefly when we were waiting for the ramen restaurant to open. I didn't film in there, but this is a Museum of Modern Art, this building right here. It actually has an interesting history. It originally was a like rehabilitation, like this is like way back in the 1800s. It was like a rehabilitation center for alcoholics. And after that, it was a school, and 
And I think it was maybe like some sort of a government building after that. But eventually in like 1980 or around there, they made it into a uh, museum. So it's a museum of modern art. And they have like rotating um, uh, exhibitions that go in there. Right now the exhibition that's in there is about uh, like recycling in Cuenca actually. It's kind of interesting. Not enough really to put into a whole video. So I got to see it. You guys didn't. But you know what? If you ever come here to Cuenca, come to Plaza San Sebastian, check in on the Museum of Modern Art and see what exhibit they have going on in there because it's completely free to enter. Um, that's one of the things I've enjoyed quite a bit about Cuenca, specifically about like this neighborhood, this historical district uh, down here. All these museums that we've went to, um, you know, like the Puma Pongo and the Medical Museum, the the Museum of uh, the Central Bank and the Currency Museum and like even some other museums that I just sort of like poked my head into um, and poked around a little bit but didn't make videos about they're all free like it's really nice um, it reminds me a lot to be honest of Argentina in Argentina there were a lot of free or like extremely extremely cheap museums um, we've been to some museums in different places and I did notice that like, we were in Santiago in Chile, um, and when we were in Lima in Peru, the museums, uh, not a lot of them were free, and some of them were actually quite expensive. Not that the experience wasn't worth it. I think for a lot of them, the experience was definitely worth it. But uh, just note, you know, if you come here to Ecuador, to Cuenca specifically, uh, a lot of the museums that I've been to are all free. Anyway, we're here at these stairs. And now this is an interesting thing. So the neighborhoods up here in the historical neighborhood behind us, the historical district, sort of like up on top of a hill. So in order to get down to the river, if you can see in front of us, there's a bridge just past that tree. Um, that bridge crossing the uh, Tomabamba River. And in order to get down to the river, you always got to go down like a big hill, down some stairs. Um, and actually, if we come down to the bottom of these stairs, we are in uh, Plaza Oto Otorongo, I believe it is. I think I'm rem remembering that correctly. But it's the plaza where we found Laredo's, that awesome, awesome uh, Mexican restaurant that had a mission style burrito that we had been craving for so many months and we found it here right here on this plaza and I didn't really look around this plaza too much when we were making that video because I was really focused on the burrito at first and then afterwards I was pretty drunk because uh, of that giant beer we drank and uh, I kind of forgot but there's a lot of other stuff on this plaza there's cafes there's, uh, there's another cafe over here there's a little veterinary assistant shop over there, I guess, and a barber shop, and some other stuff. So, so it's not just Laredo's, but if you do come to this plaza, go to Laredo's. It's right over there. It's not open. It's closed. Everything's closed because we're walking around in the morning. And uh, normally I would try to walk around at a time when everything's open. Uh, but because of the weather forecast, I don't know. I don't want to get caught. <laughs> I don't want to get caught out in the rain. Honestly, I really don't. Um, especially because we don't really have that many more days here in Cuenca for me to be able to film uh, this video. And it is, uh, it's, there's going to be rain sort of like on and off for the next, like the entire time we're here in Cuenca. Like we're not going to get any really nice all day sunny days and here we are river Tomebamba Tomebamba river right here very important very important to the uh, to the history of uh, Cuenca cool and the cool thing about Cuenca is uh, very walkable very walkable city um, and They've added, not just is it like walkable, you know, up in the streets and that things are close to each other, but like along the river here, they've added these like river walks where 
you know, like this, this street here eventually splits off and you get this nice little river walk, like a little pedestrian footpath where you can walk alongside the river. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk alongside the river all the way down to sort of the eastern, southeastern side of the center of Cuenca, where the uh, ruins of Pumapongo are, where we saw in our video about Pumapongo. So we'll head down there. So here at this intersection by the bridge over the river, we keep going that way. This uh, splits off, the road goes up to, uh, up to the historical center, and the pedestrian path continues on this way. If you head across this bridge that way, that goes over towards the University of Cuenca, where we were uh, during our video that we made about the blackout. And we are just sort of trying to explore the city and see which parts of the city were blacked out and which weren't. Walked all the way down there, past the, uh, uh, like past the university, and we ended up um, like going around by the stadium and then coming back up. So like I said, you know, you can see the videos that we've made so far. Like it's a super walkable city. You can walk all over the place um, and just sort of make a big loop and end up back where you uh, back where you started after seeing a bunch of really cool things. So here on the pedestrian walk alongside the river, really nice, right? Like it's closer to the river. There's all these trees. There's little benches along the way that you can just sort of sit. I see a lot of people out here usually during the day walking along, hanging out, sometimes even just like sitting out on the grass and enjoying the day. It's really nice. And it's really nice that they have this. Um, and it's pretty long actually. It runs for quite some ways along the river. And I've also noticed in places a little further outside of the center along the rivers, they'll have river walks like this, um, like not just along the Tomebamba River here, but along some of the other rivers you know, the four rivers of Cuenca, right? And uh, like along the river Tarqui and along the river Yanca, uh, it's in the subtitle. But they'll have like these nice river walks. I really like it. Even on a day that's a little overcast, it's nice to come down by the river, take a walk. And along the way, of course, there's bridges going across the river. Sometimes, you know, back there, like this road bridge where cars can get across. But they'll have like little pedestrian bridges, like this one right here. Where you can just head across the river if you want to, which is nice. So you're walking on the river walk, you don't have to like walk all the way back down to one of the intersections where there's a road bridge and go across there. And, of course, like uh, when there's a there'll be a bridge here to get across the river and then also some stairs to go back up to like the historical center neighborhood so it's up there up on top of the hill and what's also nice I think is some of these businesses that are like this building here is really you know there's a lot of buildings like this that are really interesting where like the top floor is open to the street up on the historical center part, but then down, you know, three, four floors below on the bottom floor, there'll be like a little restaurant or a bar, a little seating out here by the river. Very cool. It's a very interesting design for like how you build on a giant hill. And uh, of course, these buildings are all you know, old historical buildings because UNESCO World Heritage Site. Everything's preserved. Anyway, we'll keep walking down this river here, or down the river walk. And eventually, we're going to make our way to uh, Pumapongo. But on the way, we will pass a few, uh, a few other places where we've been in different videos. One thing I would say about uh, this little river walk area, just like any other, um, I would treat it like a park. Uh, and just like in any other city, if you're visiting down here um, in South America, 
I would say, as a rule, you only really want to go through like parks and this river walk as a park, of course. You only really want to go through them uh, during the day. It's really not safe to go through places like that at night just because there's not usually a lot of good lighting. You're usually very isolated and it's a chance that you could get robbed. So while I do think Cuenca is quite a safe uh, city and I've felt very safe walking around the neighborhoods um, and at night up in the historical center neighborhood where it's well lit and there's a lot of people walking around, I feel quite comfortable walking around there. I don't think I would walk around down here on the river walk um, at night. But here we are at this really cool uh, spot where the road comes up and does this little S curve. And actually, if you head down that way across the bridge, um, you're down towards like uh, the stadium where we had walked around in our video exploring, uh, exploring after the blackout or during the blackout, actually right down that way. Probably about four or five blocks down that way. It's a really nice picturesque scene and I'm super glad that the sun came out for us to film. Anyway, the river walk continues on down here even further and eventually goes all the way down to Pumapongo, the ruins of Pumapongo. As you can see, very popular with joggers. People come and jog along here. I don't because I'm lazy and fat and out of shape, which means I probably should jog, but I'm not going to. And across the river, you look, uh, well, hold on a second. Let's see if we get a, a better view of it from up here through these, uh, through these trees. But right across the river here, and here the walking path sort of ends, turns back into a sidewalk for this little street that sort of cuts in here and dead ends right here. Little residential street. I mean, this would be a really nice spot to live, right? I think it'd be really nice. If you lived like, if there was an apartment like right up there, which there probably is, Lo siento. If there was an apartment right up there, which there probably is, it'd be a really nice place to live. Be sort of tucked away in an isolated little street next to the river with a really nice neighborhood pub right there. That'd be cool. It'd be nice. Anyway, right across the street here, uh, this building, this white building, just across the bridge. That is the uh, medical museum. It's actually like a health center or a hospital, a medical center, but uh, also the medical museum that we visited was right in there, right in that building. And of course, where they have like a nice pedestrian bridge to cross the river, there's also stairs going back up to the historical center. It's very nice. Once you're, once you're here for a few days in Cuenca, you start to get a lay of exactly how uh, you can get around, you know, like where the stairs are to get down the hill, where the bridges are to get across the river, so you can go over to the other side, into the neighborhoods over there. Um, and like I said, even the neighborhoods that are outside the historical center, the ones that like border them, like um, El Vergel and um, uh, Sucre, neighborhoods like that, really easy to get to. Super easy to get to. Not very far away from the historical center. You can walk there in like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. It's really nice. Very compact. Um, it's a very compact city. And even if you want to get further out, um, all you have to do, really, is like walk, either hop a bus, which they run everywhere, take a taxi, or you walk uh, from where we started, in the uh, 
like in uh, Parque Calderon. If you walk just north, just a, like a block or two, that's where the tram line is. So you can pick up the tram at one of those stations and, uh, and ride that all the way out, you know, to the end of the line if you need to, to get out to the sort of edge of the city. And then right up here, there's another set of stairs. This is like the main, most picturesque set of stairs. You can see people actually taking pictures up there. And this bridge that goes across, just across this bridge. We're not gonna go completely across because we're gonna keep walking to Puma Pongo. But just across this bridge, uh, right over here, there's a park. Parque uh, de las Madres, I think it is. Park of the Mothers. Um, anyway, this, this park is really nice. And uh, across the park there, there's actually a, uh, a Super Maxi, which is like a Western-style grocery store. So if you're looking for that kind of a big supermarket, there is one pretty close to this neighborhood. It's right over there. And just down this street is where Paradise Indian Restaurant is. Delicious, delicious Indian restaurant. There's also a big mall over here, too. If you need, like, a mall to go shopping, there's a couple of them down there on that park. And the stadium is actually back there as well. And... Uh, yeah, so there's these nice picturesque stairs here. People can come walk out in the sunshine on a sunny day with their absolutely adorable golden retrievers. Look at that dog. Anyway, we'll keep heading down here. If we keep heading down a few, well, like the equivalent of a few more blocks along the river here, we will end up uh, at the ruins of Pumapongo once again. And then we can loop around there, head back up, up the hill into the, uh, the historical center and if we head up that direction for like north for about I don't know four or five more blocks we'll end up at Parque San Blas where we were at the very end of our video about uh, Ecuador's independence from Spain beautiful beautiful park that one Parque San Blas with a beautiful old church on it that's pretty much the norm for Cuenca. Beautiful park or plaza with a beautiful old church on it. <laughs> There's tons of that. Old churches and beautiful plazas all over this city. Really, really is nice. Just before we get uh, to Puma Pongo, the ruins, there's this uh, historic old bridge called the Puente Roto, which no longer continues over the river. It used to, of course. And now, it's just sort of like a nice tourist photo spot. People will like come out onto the Puente Roto, take pictures. It's a, an old historic spot. Would have been cool to see it going over, right? We've gone over the, over the river and ended up right over there, but it's nice to come here and you walk under it, go up on top, take some pictures. Just a nice little tourist destination photo spot. Puente Rojo. Here we can even get get our picture. There's our picture. Right there with Puente Roto. Thumbnail. Alright, so we're at the next bridge, the last bridge before we get close down to Puma Pongo, and I've realized I think I'm an idiot. I think I'm that idiot who's been walking on the bike trail the entire time. Because I almost got run over by a bike. Anyway. That's something fresh and new for me. Usually when I'm almost getting run over, it's by cars. Uh, but now getting almost run over by a bike, not bad. Pretty cool experience. Anyway, we're gonna cross the street here and try not to get run over by cars. Now one thing I like about Cuenca, because it reminds me of my city, of Chicago, is that uh, jaywalking seems to be like the citywide sport of Cuenca. Everybody trying to see how good their jaywalking skills are. And uh, coming from Chicago, my jaywalking skills are excellent. I am like top tier jaywalker. Anyway, just jaywalked across that street. It was great. But here we are. You may recognize this path, which I realize now is a bike path. But you know what? There's nowhere for me to walk as a pedestrian so we're gonna walk either on or near the bike path but you may recognize this path from 
our video about Puma Bongo, the uh, part one <laughs> of our video about Puma Bongo, where we uh, came out of the museum. We were literally like, I don't know, 20, 30 feet away from the entrance to the park. And uh, we did not know where to go, even though we had just passed a giant map and looked at a giant map telling us exactly where to go. But we didn't know where to go. So we walked all the way around the park, all the way around the ruins of Pumapongo, outside the fence, peering in, peering into the fence, you know? Like, uh, and seeing people inside, enjoying the ruins and wondering, how, how exactly do we get inside there? <sighs> It's always fun to remember times when you were a complete and total dumbass. Just so, so dumb. Like, you know, like how have you even survived for this long? Like that level of dumb? It's nice. It's nice to remember those. Keeps your ego in check. Anyway, we came all the way around this path. We were walking the other direction that time. Good times. So I noticed this sign, so maybe I wasn't completely in the wrong because it says Via Compartida. It's a, uh, you know, like a combined pedestrian and bike trail. So maybe I was not completely in the wrong for walking on this. We'll keep walking in here. Actually, on the other side of the fence, right here, is the ruins of Puma Fungo. In fact, right there, I think, well, uh, no, actually no, maybe further up. Further up here, on the other side of the fence, is like uh, the aviary, where we saw those really cool birds in the uh, second part of the video, the part two. Yeah, see, when we were walking, <laughs> we were walking around that first part of the video, oh yeah, so there, there it is. There's the aviary. There's the ruins up behind. Very cool. I really enjoyed going to that. Like, and there was so much to see in the museum and in the ruins as well. Like, man, it was really cool. Check out those videos for sure. Like, those were probably some of my most favorite videos to make from here in Cuenca. Yeah, you can see the aviary in there, the birds. But those really were, th those were some great videos. I really, really enjoyed making those videos. And I really enjoyed seeing these ruins and uh, the museum. Like I said in the video uh, that we made, you know, the first part video with the museum, it was really cool that the whole upper floor of the museum was not just explaining the ruins, but it was like a whole ethnography of different ethnic groups that live, you know, to this day, indigenous ethnic groups that live in different places um, in Ecuador. Very cool. Much cooler and much uh, more information than I thought was actually going to be in that museum. It was a welcome surprise. So definitely check that out. Yeah, see, look at this. This is not just for bikes. It's for people and dogs too. Us, the people, the joggers, and the little puppers. Hello, little pupper. It is a really nice, peaceful, peaceful walk, honestly, right next to the river. There's a lot of um, traffic up through the uh, historic center. The streets are very narrow. Uh, it gets very loud with the traffic. Um, people honking horns and the sound of like very loud engines. And also the exhaust sort of settles in. It's one of the things that I didn't like about the neighborhood. You know, amongst all the things that I did like, that's one of the things I didn't like. It's a lot of traffic, but if you need to just like get away from it, right? You just feel like you're penned in and there's too much traffic and too much noise and too much uh, exhaust. You just walk like literally a few blocks down a set of stairs and you're right here. Right here by this beautiful river. Walking along this nice path. Maybe jogging if you're so inclined. 
or riding a bike, if you have one of those, or walking your dog, if you have one of those. It's very nice. It's the kind of thing I think that uh, <laughs> people would pay like insane amounts of money to live in a neighborhood that's like this in a city in the United States. Honestly, I mean, they really would. I think, to be honest, that's probably one of the reasons why there are so many, like so many expats and retirees from the United States who come to this city specifically and like retire here or, or live here. It's because, I mean, to get a neighborhood with beautiful historical architecture from centuries ago and then a few blocks away, you know, everything's super walkable, everything's super close. A few blocks away, you're down here by this beautiful river, nice walking path. The city has really good public transportation to get you around to the other parts of the city. And the whole thing is surrounded by these big, beautiful, picturesque hills. Yeah. That's definitely going to be one of the most expensive cities in the United States, if you were staying there. That's going to be like a, uh, you know, like a Seattle or like a San Francisco, something like that. Very expensive. Very, very expensive. Here in Cuenca, not very expensive by, uh, by cost of living standards in the United States. But even if you don't plan to, uh, you know, move down here permanently to Cuenca, and uh, live out your golden years. Still, really, really awesome place to visit. Just to come and see and walk around and uh, just enjoy, enjoy the city. It's a really enjoyable city. And you know, uh, as we get here to like the turn, I think this is where, yeah, to go back up the hill past Puma Pongo here. Uh, there's some bikes coming, don't wanna get run over. But I think, you know, these videos, like I mentioned, usually we're walking around and we're saying, it's me, it's me blathering, which of course this video is me blathering also, but like, it's me blathering specifically about like what I liked about the neighborhood. Um, and I realized I went back and walked, watched some of those videos and uh, every video is basically, this is basically the same. It's me saying the same stuff. It's me saying I liked it because, uh, it was very walkable and it was a very pretty neighborhood um, and the public transportation was very accessible and there were um, you know like stores restaurants cafes bars all that stuff all very very like close right in walking distance and that's pretty much what, <laughs> what I say about all of these things and as you can tell like just from uh, as we look at the ruins of Pumapongo and the the garden out there with all the agricultural crops and whatnot, and the uh, drainage uh, system. Anyway, as we look at all of this, I realize that if you've watched the other videos that we made from Cuenca, you already know. <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to say all this stuff. You already know. You already know that this city, not just the central neighborhood where we were staying and the few blocks, you know, around that neighborhood. But like, the whole city is like that, basically. It's like a very, it's a very walkable city. It's very easily accessible by public transportation. There's lots of beautiful stuff to see, lots of amazing stuff to do. And it's very, very easy to get around the city outside of walking distance. If you have to go anywhere further, no problem. Super easy and super affordable with either taxi or the public transportation in Cuenca, which is actually quite good. Here we are at the top of the hill, and right at the top, Museo Pumapongo, and Central Bank of Ecuador, where the uh, currency museum was. So we made a nice little loop all the way around, all the way from way, way out on the eastern, or I mean western, edge of the center of the city, way out by Plaza San Sebastian. Came all the way down by the river, back up the hill, and here we are at uh, Pumapongo and Banco Central. So basically, 
you can see all the things and actually we're gonna cut up here and head up a few blocks and we'll be at uh, Plaza San Blas. So we turn the corner here and head north. The museum behind us, a couple of blocks. We head up this way about four blocks. We're right at Parque San Blas. Um, and you can see like all the things that we went to, all the different things we visited and all the other videos that we made here in Cuenca. They're all just like <laughs> a few blocks away from each other, right? Like this entire walk, even though for time I cut, you know, a few things, right? Just some of the boring stuff of me just, you know, walking, not doing anything. Which actually might not be the boring stuff. Maybe, maybe me talking and rambling is the boring stuff. I really hope not. But anyway, this entire walk, the whole loop, you could go from the it's historical center, Parque Calderon, all the way out to San Sebastian, down along the river, past all the things that we saw along the river, and then up around Pumapungo, up north here to Parque San Blas, and then from there, you could just head a couple blocks uh, west, and you'll be back at Parque Calderon, in the center, center of the historical center. The whole thing will probably take you about an hour to do. Nice walk. Very nice. And there's so much to see along the way. And so many delicious restaurants that you could stop at and eat. Really is a great city. All right, so we're like a block away from Parque San Blas. It's right in front of us here. And they have had the street closed off. Well, to cars at least. I see pedestrians walking through, so I don't think that's a problem. But it looks like they have some sort of a, I don't know, festival, concert, some sort of big party going on, people marching in the streets. It's pretty cool. Whatever it is, whatever's going on up here, we're gonna check it out. I didn't think I was gonna get this kind of uh, stuff in this video. I thought this was gonna just be another, you know, boring walking around, listening to Gary talk about stuff video. Um, but hey, get more than you bargain for here on a, on a Saturday in Cuenca, Ecuador. Yeah, something's going on up here. I can see festival, some, some sort of thing. Pretty cool. Let's go check it out. Okay, Parque San Blas. Beautiful Parque San Blas. And uh, it looks like there is something going on here. <laughs> Definitely. More so than when we were here before. These street vendor stalls were here when we were here before, but this looks like some sort of a parade or something. I don't know. I see people holding banners. I see people wearing matching clothes. Something's going on. Something's going on. We're just trying to find out what's going on, right? What do we think? Disculpe, señora. ¿Qué pasa aquí? ¿Qué pasa aquí ahora? Ah, es el desfile del Colegio Linda Toral. Oh. Son los 100 años del sí. colegio. Sí, okay, okay. Eso es. Muchas gracias. Okay, so it's a celebration of the 100th anniversary of uh, the college. Yeah, here. El Linda Toral, 100 años. 100th anniversary of the college. Okay, cool. Look at that. 100th anniversary celebration, and we just happened to be here on the day that it's happening. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, there are people all the way down the street. Way, way down there. This street right here that we're looking down is Simon Bolivar, right? So this is the street that we started out on. It's the like northern, um, uh, the northern edge of the Parque Calderon in the historic center. We go up that way, maybe like five or six blocks, we're right back at Parque Calderon. Now, for the purposes of this video, I don't know if we're gonna walk five or six blocks. Well, you know what, let's walk a few blocks this way, at least, right? We'll see what's going on. Man, yeah, this goes like all the way down. They're lined up like all the way down the street there too. And lined up here. I imagine that at some point, this entire thing is about to become a parade. 
It has that feeling. Definitely has the feeling of like, we're about to start marching and it's gonna become a parade. And, and we're right here at the part where it's like, they haven't started marching yet. But I think further ahead, man, this is a parade. Either that or we're just like, now in witnessing a very, very slow parade. Yeah, because they're starting to march. Everyone's starting to move. Fantastic. I mean, this is the thing, like, you know, you head out on a random day, expecting, you know, on one of the last days we're here in Cuenca, right? You head out just expecting to make a, you know, a video about why you like the neighborhood. Maybe walk around and see some of the things that we've already seen. And there's like a whole party going on in the street. People are dancing, music is playing. They're celebrating the 100th anniversary of a college. How cool. Super cool. I almost wish that I hadn't spent so much battery in my camera just wandering around blathering to you had I known that this was here. Now what I'm wondering is, we are going along Simon Bolivar here. And Simon Bolivar was the street that we were on uh, when we first started too, right? And we were walking next to that marching band. And I wonder, it was that part of this? Was this, is this whole thing just like all the way down Simon Bolivar for blocks and blocks and blocks? And this is all just one giant party? that's been going on. Maybe it is, I hope it is. I hope that whatever's going on in Parque Calderon is part of this too. That would make it even cooler if the whole thing was just like one big party from Plaza San Sebastian here, or, or rather Plaza San Blas, all the way down to uh, Parque Calderon. That would be cool. And you know what, now that I look down the street here, hold on, let me try and zoom in. It looks like it is. Because it looks like the parade is, literally goes all the way down for blocks and blocks. I can see like the church that uh, is like right next to uh, uh, Parque Calderon that I recognize. And I think, uh, I think this goes all the way. I think we're going all the way down. Of course, it goes without saying that on a normal day in this neighborhood, the streets are certainly lively and a little bit crowded, but not like this. I guess these are all like, well, let me take a look at one of these banners real quick. Yeah, I think this is all just like each class, right? From the college, they're all marching together. They have, uh, you know, a banner for each one. It's basically like a big college reunion, the hundredth one. And they're just doing it like right down the main street, right down Simon Bolivar. Very cool. Very, very cool. You never know what you're gonna find. You walk out the door with your camera and you turn it on and you never know what you're gonna find. I filmed a lot of this. This video is gonna be longer than I thought it was gonna be. I'll probably end up cutting some of the useless blathering that I did before we got here. Cause this is much cooler, obviously, right? Yeah, very cool. Yeah, this goes on forever, man. They're like, I can see all the way up there. We've already been walking along for like two, two blocks, two and a half blocks. And it keeps going as far as I can see. It's a big, long parade. 
All the way out. All the way back out to Parque Calderón. like let me see here I think they're going in order of graduation I was looking at the banners back there a little ways and they were like 1993 94 these banners 83 84 so I imagine up at the front is probably like the oldest graduating classes and then the younger classes are back there which is good you know right seniority right Put the people who have seniority first up in front and make the youngins wait back there in uh, Parque San Blas to get their turn to come in through the parade. It's pretty cool. I like that. And of course, because the street's closed, we don't have to worry about getting run over by cars for once. For once in our entire trip here to South America. We're not worried about getting run over. Only worried about getting run over by pedestrians. I can see actually, yeah, right here. Like about, I don't know, three, three blocks up. That's uh, Parque Calderon. And it looks like the parade goes all the way there. I can start to see some of the buildings that are on Parque Calderon that I recognize. All right, I'm actually gonna cut right here because we're running very low on battery all right we're here one block one block off of Parque Calderon and there's a very loud drum corps that we just walked past so deafening you ne definitely would not have been able to hear anything other than the drum corps we can take a look at them there they are we got everybody lined up here this is sort of like, I think, the receiving, the receiving end of the parade. Where everybody gets received up here into, uh, into Parque Calderon. Like one block up, that yellow building that's there on the left, that's like on the, on the plaza. Walking, we've been walking along here for like six blocks basically six blocks or so from like maybe even more from Parque San Blas all the way up to Calderon it's been parade the whole way so this has got to be all the same thing <laughs> who knew that like when we came in at the very beginning of the video we walked into the plaza and there were a bunch of people here and we found that other marching band and we were like, hey, what the hell is going on here? Well, apparently this is what was going on. And it's still going on. And it seems like it's going to be going on for a while. Because people are happy. They're clapping, they're singing, they're cheering, they're marching. Super happy. Yeah. It's a great day. It's a great day to be out walking around in Cuenca, Ecuador. And I'll say it, like, normally in these videos I blather a lot, which I did in this one too about specifically why I like a city or a neighborhood. But, uh, I mean, just look at this. Look around. How can you not like this? 
Yeah, yeah. How can you not like a city where you go out, you wake up on a Saturday, you just walk outside, and there's this going on? It's pretty cool. I think uh, we're actually coming up to some sort of a, like a graduation ceremony situation or something up here, because there's like what looks like important people sitting under a tent and someone talking on a microphone. And people are waving. Oh yeah, okay. I think this is like the receiving, right? They have some important people, they sit up there, and they receive each one of the classes comes through. They come through, they wave, they are announced, get some pictures taken, that's so cool. This is so cool. I will say, this did not happen at my college graduation. Actually, if I'm being really honest, I skipped my college graduation. I got the I got the I got the degree. They gave me the diploma, and I was like, "F this, I'm out." I took off. So cool. Look at this. All right, well, we'll make our way through here. And actually, we'll head back down to, uh, to our hotel. Because I do want to show off our hotel. Look, we are making a video about the neighborhood where we stayed. And I want to show the place where we stayed. Um, mainly because, like, when I stay in an Airbnb, I normally don't, like, show the place. I mean, you're going to be able to find Airbnbs and whatnot. But... Uh, for a hotel, I'm going to show off the front at least because, you know, it's got a name and a brand and uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. The service was excellent and so it deserves a shout out. So let's head down that way. This is where we started the video, by the way, right here, Simone Bolivar. All right, we'll walk down here. I got to turn the camera off because I'm running out of battery. But we'll walk down out of the square, and next, when you see us, we'll be like two blocks over this way by the hotel. So with the, with the plaza behind us, we head down the street here. For just a couple of blocks, we head down this way, and we'll be back, uh, back at uh, Calle Juan Jaramillo. It's the street that our hotel was on. Jaywalk across the street here. That's right, I'm the jaywalking champion. Anyway, down the street here, a couple of blocks, and I think this is a really good video, good fitting send off to, uh, to the city of Cuenca. Uh, a good way to sort of uh, wrap up our stay here in Cuenca, uh, which I really, really enjoyed, I gotta tell you. I wasn't uh, fully sure that I was gonna stay longer than one month in, uh, in Ecuador. I had planned to come here to Cuenca uh, for sure for a month and sort of see how it goes, right? Um, and I enjoyed it so much that I decided to plan to stay here for basically the whole 90 days that I have on my tourist visa. So there's plenty, plenty of more, more uh, content gonna come from here in Ecuador. But our time here in Cuenca is, is wrapping up. And uh, what is there to say? What is there to say about Cuenca that I haven't already said in this extremely long and rambling video? I mean, it's great. It's a great city. I really liked it. It has, it has everything that I'm looking for in a city when I visit. Um, and and uh, the thing that I really like the most, and it's the thing, to be honest, that I like the most about uh, Argentina, which I mentioned in the video that we made about the five things that I like the most about Argentina. Uh, the thing I liked the most here was people were super, super nice. I met a lot of really, really nice people here. Um, and not just people from Ecuador, because Cuenca is a city that's very popular with expats and immigrants. So I met people from all over the place. I met people from the United States. I met people from Europe. I met people from other places in South America, like Colombia and Venezuela, and you know, all over the place. 
And I also met plenty of people from here in Ecuador who were super, super nice. I mean, everybody was very, very nice and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's always nice when you, uh, you know, you get in a cab or something or you just meet somebody on the street or, you know, you, you feel comfortable like asking someone a question. A woman over in uh, Parque San Blas, when I needed to know, hey, what's going on here? I didn't feel uncomfortable at all about asking her, like, what's going on here? Because honestly, I knew like anybody I asked, they're going to be super friendly. They're going to explain it to me and uh, they're not going to be like put off by the fact that I'm just like randomly approaching them on the street. And uh, also probably not going to be put off by the fact that I'm walking around with a camera talking to myself like an idiot. Anyway, we're going to stop that now because we're at the hotel. We're at the hotel where we're staying. It is uh, the Aleros Hotel Boutique. See the sign right there. This is where we're staying. Really nice hotel. The people who work here are super nice. Uh, everybody's been very friendly. I would highly recommend it. If you're coming here to Cuenca, stay at the hotel. All right. This video has been way too long and that's going to be the end of it. Uh, next time we see you, we will be in Ecuador, but in a different city. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one.